Hello, I'm Wes Turnbull, and welcome to Freemasons The Inside Story. In this episode, we meet Women's National Basketball League star Leilani Mitchell, and we celebrate the 100th birthday of past Grandmaster John Connell. All that and more on Freemasons The Inside Story. And I would personally like to thank every one of you for coming along tonight and supporting our second annual um, Pink Cocktail Party. The influence that uh, Freemasons has had on the Living Centre has been profound. When we began um, the centre three years ago, we didn't have very much money at all and Freemason stepped forward and decided in a most amazing way to fund one of our breast cancer nurses for three years. $75,000 a year, money we didn't have for three years and this actually gave us an opportunity to take care of so many more women and their families coming through the center. We could afford one breast cancer nurse, but obviously the luxury of having two was profound for us and continues to be today. Um, without their help, I, I, I shudder when I think that how we, could we have got through that. Freemasons coming into our life, it was profound for us. And, uh, and last year, through the, the month of October, they donated um, money to help us in our wig library. Then it was a library, but now it's a wig salon where we can actually give the wigs away to women throughout the state. And it's amazing and touches my heart how many women come to us driving many hours to receive a wig from us free of charge because they simply don't have the money after they've been through chemotherapy and they've lost their hair, which for women is a profound and dreadful loss, apart from everything else that's happening in their lives. So Freemasons have been the most amazing group of men that have come into a women's cause. Um, obviously it affects the whole family. But in our early years, without them, I don't think we would have been able to look after the 3,000 women and their families that have come to us over the last three years. Freemasons Victoria has been involved in breast cancer awareness for approximately six years. And I'm really excited because we were involved in the very first function, which was a, a breakfast and we raised $15,000 and we were over the moon. And here we are, you know, hoping tonight to raise $100,000 and we've made a great difference to a lot of people and increased the awareness of, of breast cancer uh, throughout the state. And we've engaged our members because it has involved their partners. So all in all, it's been very exciting and very rewarding. Well, the main aim is to ensure that tonight's function reaches the target aim, which is $100,000. And if there's a shortfall from uh, the monies raised from all the participants and auctions and raffles, my board will ensure that that figure is reached. Uh, it is, of course, uh, only a small part of the many things that the Board of Benevolence involves itself with, 
particularly in support of its members and families, uh, of Freemasons and the wider community in a whole range of uh, support for their needs. Tonight the funds raised are going to support the oncology um, ward at Epworth Freemasons. Um, that includes um, purchasing equipment for the ward. Um, that is uh, some high-low beds, some um, chemotherapy chairs, um, some ice machines, uh, vital science monitors. Um, all that equipment is vital to um, helping those cancer patients on that ward. It's a 35-bed ward and um, we, it's, uh, cares for about 10,000 patients each year and um, the support that the Freemasons is, is giving is absolutely fantastic. We're here tonight at the Dandenong Basketball Stadium, the home of the Dandenong Rangers, a women's basketball club in the WNBL for an exciting match against the Logan Thunder. But the real focus of the night is fundraising and awareness for women's breast cancer. Freemasons Victoria is partnering with the Dandenong Rangers and both raising funds and awareness for the Think Pink Foundation and Epworth Freemasons Medical Foundation. The girls and the, uh, and the supporters are turning the stadium pink tonight with their great outfits and all for a good cause. Let's have a look and see how they go. New York Liberty star Leilani Mitchell was named the WNBA's most improved player in 2010. She's since come to Australia and is playing with the Dandenong Rangers, in fact the forward with the Rangers. Leilani Mitchell, welcome, good to see you. Thank you, nice to see you too. How long have you been playing basketball for? Oh geez, forever. Um, I think my first team, I was probably about eight, seven or eight years old. Yeah. It's in your blood, obviously. Yes, um, I come from a family of five boys, you know, all brothers, so I was definitely a tomboy and played sports all growing up. Now you were born in Washington and went to play with New York Liberty. Uh, that must have been a great thrill for you. Um, I wasn't too excited about it, actually. <laughs> it was too far away from home. Um, just very different, you know, the whole other side of the country, so. Um, but I've learned to love it now, you know, it's a great place to be. Well, you've gone from uh, moving to the other side of the country to play basketball to moving to the other side of the world and come to Australia, which was in fact uh, the home for your mum. Yes. Um, tell us, uh, where, whereabouts was your mum from? Um, she was born on Thursday Island, um, moved away from there when she was probably seven or eight, some, somewhere around there, and they moved to Darwin, um, where she grew up until she was uh, marrying my father and they moved back to the States, my father's American. Um, traveled back and forth, you know, for a while having some babies here and there. Um, and yeah, she was based there and so I, she had eventually moved back here and so I've been here twice before to visit her. Homeland for your mum, was that the reason for you moving to Australia? Um, yes, you know, it's obviously in my roots and my mum always wanted me to come and play here. Not only play here, but she always encouraged my brothers as well just to come for school or whatever, you know, obviously she loves, she loved home, so um, it was always in the back of my mind, for sure. Well, I'm sure the Dandenong Rangers are very excited to have you here playing, uh, playing for them. And tonight is a big game, obviously, and a big fundraising opportunity to assist Think Pink. That's a pretty important charity to you and uh, the connection with your mum. Tell us about that. Yeah, um, well, my mom passed away four years ago due to breast cancer. Um, you know, she fought it for about two years. Um, so obviously it's a, it's a touchy subject for me, um, you know, it's always, I get really into these games because it means so much to me and so I got the pink wristband and I bought the little pin just to support the cause and I'm going to get some raffle tickets. So, um, you know, just being aware of our bodies as females, making sure we get checked regularly um, is very important. That's a great message. It's, uh, it's obviously a, a very important cause and one that's very personal to you. I know you'll be playing extra hard tonight to support that cause and we wish you well. So uh, great to meet you. Best of luck for tonight's game. And uh, yeah, no doubt you'll, be, you'll have an extra spring in your step throughout the game. Hopefully, yes, I hope so. And I've got some cool shoes. I don't have them on right now, but hopefully you guys can see them. My teammate made them and they're supposed to be super awesome. So We wish you well. Thanks, Leilani. Thank
the two people behind the charities that the Freemasons of Victoria are supporting with Think Pink and Epworth Freemasons supported here with Irene Hendel, the founder of Think Pink, and also Scott Bolger from, uh, from the Epworth Freemasons Medical Foundation. Irene, what does an exciting game of basketball mean to, uh, to Think Pink and awareness for breast cancer? Well, it brings in to um, our world of um, uh, supporting women with breast cancer um, a, a whole new generation of women um, that can look at us and see um, the profound work that um, we both do in our worlds uh, supporting women with breast cancer um, and it makes them aware uh, that there is a need because we have so many young women that are diagnosed with breast cancer um, in this country. Um, one in eight women will be diagnosed with breast cancer in this country. It's not an older woman's disease. It's affecting every generation. And um, I think it's terribly important that they all know that we exist and the work that we do. And it makes w young women mindful of how they have to care about their general health. You must be very excited to see so many people decked out in pink tonight. Even Scott get, got in on, on the act. And Scott, what does, uh, what does this sort of occasion mean for you and raising awareness for the work that you do? Well, I think for us it's a, a representation of the wonderful relationship we have with Freemasons Victoria, uh, the terrific support that they continue to provide to our hospital. Um, uh, the oncology services at uh, Freemasons Hospital are, are one of the biggest in the state. And tonight we'll, we'll help to raise funds to make sure that service continues to be one of the best and supportive at a time when women really need it. Wonderful to uh, be able to promote your work to uh, a group of supporters as enthusiastic as tonight's crowd and also to raise some very important funds. So uh, I hope it's been a, uh, a satisfying night for both of you. We're with Mark Wright, the coach of the Jayco Rangers, the winning team in a very exciting uh, basketball game tonight, Mark. Congratulations. Thanks very much, Wes. Yeah, it's, uh, we, you know, we play an up-tempo style of game, so it's always exciting for the crowd. Now, the team, I'm sure, works hard every week to, uh, to bring home a winning result, but tonight was a, uh, a particularly special uh, effort, given that it was in support of women's breast cancer and Think Pink. Yeah, and I think that that's uh, you know a logical choice for us to support that charity, you know, being a female uh, sport and uh, actually having players here who have been uh, affected by breast cancer in their family. So you know we're right behind it and happy to be involved. Well, they look terrific as you do in the uh, pink T-shirts. So I guess that helped lift everybody just that little bit. A absolutely, and uh, you know pink shoes, pink socks, uh, pink shirts, and um, you know it's a wonderful, wonderful charity. And um, as I say, uh, we're so happy to be involved with the Freemasons and be involved in this. That's fantastic, and the crowd got behind it as well, so uh, hopefully they, uh, they assisted in what was a, a good result for the Rangers. Yeah, I, I believe they did. I, I think they, they, they uh, you know, sold lots of raffle tickets and uh, got a lot of money, and that's what we're here to do is try and raise money for a worthy charity. A couple of months ago I had the pleasure of interviewing Most Worshipful Brother Dr John Connell uh, on approaching his centenary. On the 22nd of October, Most Worshipful Brother John turned 100. And tonight there is a special Masonic function to celebrate that with a number of dignitaries.
most worshipful Grandmaster and brethren. We are here tonight to honour most worshipful brother John Connell on his 100th birthday and we shouldn't lose sight of that fact. What a great achievement from a great man. Engineer, soldier, Freemason. We are here to show our appreciation, support, loyalty and love for this fine person. We will be talking about all the aspects of his life and we will start with Right Worshipful Brother John Glover to talk about his military history. Brethren, there is no better classroom than that where the tools of leadership are shaped on the anvil of war, forged by the heat of combat and annealed by the blood of friends and colleagues. John Connell learnt that lesson and applied it successfully in the intervening years. Many of us are here tonight because we thrived on the leadership that John displayed as Grand Master. How often did we hear loyalty is a two-way street, up and down. You pledge yours to me and I in return pledge mine to you. Major John Connell, we respect you, we admire you, we salute you. John has covered such a wide extensive area of engineering and, and other areas as well. And throughout Freemasonry, he's probably best known for his involvement in the Melbourne Underground Railway. John didn't just sit in his office. With his special skills, he contributed to education, to industry and to government. And in recognition of his service, and the, the contribution that he'd made, and he had uh, initially done his qualification at RMIT, the RMIT University conferred the honorary degree of Doctor of Engineering. In 1980, he was awarded the Curnow Medal from the University of Melbourne. Now, again, if you don't, haven't heard of the Curnow Medal, and many may not have, it's the top engineering award in Victoria. In 1985, he was made a fellow of the Australian Academy of Technological Sciences and Engineering. And then in 1987, he was made a member of the Order of Australia, AM. Now John's other activities included being a director of the Gas and Fuel Corporation of Victoria, a director of the Overseas Corporation of Victoria, a member of the Faculty of Engineering at the University of Melbourne, a scientific associate of the Zoological Board of Victoria, and in mentioning those, they are just some of the activities that he had. <laughs> Everybody here was as a brother 
and every one of you I think I know. In fact, I know I know. And I think it's been a wonderful thing. Uh, and I said to my family just recently, uh, they wanted to know what I'd leave them. And I think I should give to you what I based my life really on. And it was, a, it was a, a motto that no one knows who wrote it. And it goes like this, and I quote, he, he either fears his fate too much or his deserts are small who dares not put it to the touch to win or lose it all. Now you must run risks and I've learnt that very much so. And with all the things I've done, if, you, if I went back to some of the things I did, I, 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 I never talked about really, and as John talked about, they were pretty risky. But I had the confidence in them, and I learnt that at the war. And I think we're all going to go through course, courses, brethren, but I believe Freemasonry gives us this course. I work with every one of you. And I, I work, I believe, is therapy. It's just make brings us together. The night has been wonderful. Thank you, Worshipful Master, for this reflection. I'll treasure that. And I'll treasure this too. This copy of the uh, Engineers of Australia. I'm proud of being an engineer. I was proud of being a soldier. I'm very proud of being a, a, a Freemason. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for the wonderful night. I've, just, I've um, appreciated very much every bit of it. And I congratulate those who bothered to do it. Yeah. 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 Thanks for joining us. To find out more about Freemasonry, visit the Freemasons Victoria website at www.freemasonsvic.net.au or phone us on 1800 Freemason. You can also find us on Facebook, Twitter, Flickr, LinkedIn and Google+. Next week on Freemasons The Inside Story, we meet Benedict Scholarship recipient Kelly Trenery. My love for music started right when I was little and as I worked my way through high school and going through all the orchestras and choirs, it became more prominent to me that I wanted to be a music teacher. See you then.